Welcome back friends. Today I bring to you a science fiction action thriller movie named The Outlander. It's a story of an encounter between an alien monster and Vikings of the Iron Age. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie is set somewhere in Norway around 760 AD in the Iron Age. A spaceship is seen falling through the sky and crashing into a lake. As it submerges into the water, two astronauts come out and swim towards the shore. One of the astronauts faints on reaching the shore. When he wakes up, he sees that the other has died because of injuries sustained during the crash. He retrieves a device which looks like a navigation and information system. The device runs a scan and tells him that he is on Earth from the time period of 760 AD in the Iron Age. He tries to scan for any other spaceships around Earth but nothing is detected. Using the device, he loads all required information about current language, people and culture in his mind within seconds. He has in his possession a very powerful advanced tech weapon which he fires to test. He sets up the SOS beacon and begins searching for something in the forest. He comes across a village site which is in ruins. Most of the huts are burned down and no one is in sight. He sees claw marks on one of the hut doors. A distant sound of a horse rider alerts him and he runs to see what it is, but the horse rider takes him by surprise and knocks him out. He loses his grip and the gun falls into a flowing river. The horse rider ties the astronaut and takes him to his Viking village named Herod. Herod is a small village enclosed within a wooden wall with sentries all around the perimeter. The current king of Herod village is having a conversation with his daughter Freya over a practice sword fight. He is trying to convince her to marry Wolfric, who is to be the next king after him but she is not interested in marrying Wolfric. Wolfric comes in and informs the king that Gunnar's village was sacked and there were no survivors, not even a signal body. Gunnar is leader of a separate settlement village Closeby and is their enemy. The king is concerned that Gunnar might assume it was done by them and start a war. Wolfric says he caught a man in the woods nearby the village. During interrogation, the astronaut informs Wolfric that his name is Kainan and he is from distant north. He was just hunting a dragon in the woods and has got nothing to do with the destroyed village. Wolfric and his men don't believe Kainan as the dragons are considered to be extinct. After a fist fight, Kainan is tied up and Wolfric asks Freya to tend to the prisoner's wounds. Meanwhile Kainan regains consciousness and is able to burn down the ropes around his hands freeing himself. He keeps on pretending to be still tied up when Freya comes in and starts treating his wounds. Freya asks Kainan whether he actually destroyed Gunnar's camp which he denies. Kainan knocks out Freya and Bjorn and tries to escape out of the village. Night has fallen and we see two sentries discussing a situation if Gunnar attacks their village. One of the sentries smells something strange and turns to see the other sentry has disappeared from his post. Cautiously, he tries to inspect outside but is killed by the mysterious beast. The screams of the sentry alert everyone and they assume Gunnar has attacked their village. The beast enters their village and starts killing people one by one. Bjorn tracks the beast down and slashes at the beast but his sword is ineffective against the hard skin of the beast. Kainan sees the beast scaling the perimeter wall with a body in his claws and shouts at the beast by its name Morwen. Kainan tries to scale the wall but he is captured. Everyone is confused where is Gunnar, but no one knows who attacked them. Looking at the devastated huts, Kainan remembers how he lost his family and his home in a similar way. The next morning, a meeting takes place in King's Hut where they try to make any sense of last night's attack. Some feel it were the spirits, some feel it was another clan but that they conclude that it was an animal which killed everyone as the bodies had claw marks on them. They bring in Kainan for interrogation. The king asks Kainan about the dragon Kainan mentioned earlier. Kainan tells everyone about Morwen and that he is responsible for all these deaths as he brought Morwen along with him when his ship crashed near their village. He tells them Morwen emits a pungent smell which feels like death and attracts its prey with lights. He seriously insists that they believe him and take him along for the hunt of the dragon. On their way, Boromir offers Kainan a traditional wine called mead which Kainan finds hard to drink because of its weird taste. On their way, they see traces of blood and bones and split in two parties for the search. Two of the men are killed by a beast in the cave. Wolfric, Boromir, Kainan and the king enter the cave and fight with the huge bear. The bear is about to kill the king when Kainan kills it with his sword. The king is very impressed by Kainan's bravery and grants him a free man status and welcomes him into their clan. They all celebrate the kill by having a feast. Kainan is given a hut of his own with some new clothes. He joins the celebrations and everyone welcomes Kainan to the clan. They play some games and Kainan is able to gain respect of the other members. Later Kainan tells Freya that everyone is wrong about thinking that the bear had attacked their village. It was the Morwen and it will attack again. Right then a sentry is killed by an arrow. This time, it's really Gunnar who has attacked their village with his men. A fierce battle takes place. 
lot of casualties occur on both sides but finally Gunnar is defeated and he withdraws outside the walls. Before leaving, he threatens the king that he will not stop before taking his revenge for killing his family. Gunnar thinks his family was killed by the king's clan unaware of the existence of the monstrous beast which is actually responsible for it. Gunnar's group waits in the woods to launch another surprise attack. They split up in two groups and surround the village. One of the Gunner's groups is attacked by the Morwen and Gunner and his men rush to help the other group. Gunner comes face to face with the Morwen and attacks it with his axes but Morwen is unaffected. They start running towards the village in desperation to save themselves. Wolfric thinks it's a trick and orders his archers to shoot at them. But Gunner and his men keep running towards their village gates ignoring the arrows. Kynon senses the danger and opens the gates for them to come in. Everyone sees the Morwen and they are in shock. Later they debate on what to do. Kynon says that Morwen is too powerful to hunt in the open so it's best that they trap it. The king agrees with Kynon and they start building a trap under Kynon's instructions. They dig up a large pit and fill it with whale oil which is highly inflammable. The plan is to lure the Morwen into the trap and lit it up killing it with the blast. The king offers Kynon a position in the clan if he plans to stay after all this is over. The scene cuts to the cave where Morwen has been storing its kills. One of the men picked up by Morwen is still alive. He is terrified and sees the Morwen giving birth to a baby. Meanwhile, in the village, Freya and Kynon share a moment. Kynon tells her about his people. How they wiped up an entire planet which was home of Morwens. They killed every Morwen, took over the planet and started living there. But one of the Morwen survived and it entered their compound and killed his family and destroyed their homes. Freya has developed a soft corner for Kynon and has started to love him. She gives Kynon a sword which is their ancestral sword of great value believing in Kynon's faith and abilities. Everyone prepares to lure and hunt the Morwen. They open the gates and Kynon and Wolfric go out first to check. A boy who had gone to get more arrows hears some noises coming out of the well. When Boromir turns, the boy is nowhere to be seen and the arrows are scattered all around the well. They don't see anything but Kynon senses something and throws the fire torch in the woods revealing the waiting Morwen. The Morwen slowly starts advancing towards them but right then the village priest arrives and tries to chant some prayers right on the face of Morwen and hope that the devil will spare them. That has no effect on Morwen, naturally and it kills the priest by blowing up his body to bits. Kynon and Wolfric start running back towards the village gate. Wolfric is hit by Morwen and falls into the trap along with Morwen. Kynon pulls Wolfric out and they lit up the oil. There is a huge blast and everyone assumes that the Morwen died with it. Meanwhile the baby Morwen has already entered the village undetected via the well route and attacks the women hiding in a hut. The women run out of the hut screaming in fear. The mother Morwen also emerges out of the trap. It is badly hurt but survived the blast. The baby Morwen attacks Freya but king intervenes leading to Morwen attacking the king and injuring him fatally. Outside, the mother Morwen is attacked by Kynon and Wolfric but the swords don't do any damage to it and it runs off slicing off head of Gunnar with its tail. The next morning, the villagers take the boats and leave the village. A small hunting party remains behind which includes Kynon, Wolfric, Boromir, Freya and few others. Kynon, Freya and Wolfric go on a boat to retrieve the metal parts from his sunken spaceship in hopes that they can make some weapons out of that metal which is far more sharp and hard to pierce through the skin of Morwen. When Kynon returns to the surface, he sees their boat is smashed and Freya has been taken by the Morwen. Once the weapons made by that metal are ready, they go down the well to search for the Morwens. They enter an underground system of caves where the Morwens are hiding. Morwen has brought Freya to its lair and kept her alive to feed on her later. The Morwen is about to kill Freya when it hears some noise in the caves and goes to investigate it. Morwen attacks and takes away one of the men. Wolfric and Kynon follow the screams and finding the den of Morwens. The baby Morwen attacks them but Kynon is able to seriously wound it by a sword. While escaping it attacks Boromir and fatally injures him. Boromir dies of his wounds a little while later. The baby Morwen's eyes are damaged by Kanan's attack earlier so it tries to smell Freya. Kynon reaches the spot and passes the sword to Freya who beheads the Morwen in the nick of time. The mother Morwen who is badly injured and resting hears her baby's last cries and rushes to the spot to take revenge. Freya, Kynon and Wolfric run through the tunnel and reach a dead end through the waterfall. They are trapped and nowhere to go. Wolfric tries to buy them time and attacks the Morwen. Morwen gets hold of Wolfric and injures him badly and taunts Kynon to come get it and goes back behind the waterfall. Kynon picks up Wolfric's king's sword and enters the waterfall. Morwen tries to ambush Kynon but Kynon is able to cut its tail injuring the Morwen badly. Green blood of Morwen starts dripping everywhere. Morwen tries to come from behind Kynon but Freya attacks it from behind giving Kynon time to hit it by his sword. 
In the commotion, Morwen slips and is about to fall from the waterfall edge when it gets hold of Kanan's arm and hangs by it. Kainan cuts the Morwen's arm and it falls to its death on the rocks at the bottom of the waterfall. Wolfric is still hanging on to his life and inquires if the Morwen is dead. He says his last few words and dies peacefully. Kainan and Freya signal to the boats to return. Kainan returns to the lake and dives to bid final goodbye to her wife whose body is floating around at the bottom of the lake. He then comes out and goes to the rescue beacon. One of the spaceships has picked up the signal and comes to rescue Kainan. Freya also sees the spaceship in the sky and is surprised to see such a thing. The spaceship is slowly descending to land but Kainan destroys the beacon as he has decided to stay here with Freya forever. The spaceship goes away after the signal is lost. Proper ceremonial burial is given to the old king and Wolfric. Freya offers the king's medallion to Kainan and he accepts it and becomes their new king. As everyone watches, we hear Freya's voice narrating that only she knows Kainan's secret. The secret that the gods had sent him and when the time came to go back to the gods meaning his people in spaceship, he chose to live with them. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.